Hello, my name is Christopher Lay and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and today we'll be discussing the pediatric eye exam. This video is intended to introduce medical students with no prior exposure to ophthalmology to the important skills required for a basic pediatric eye exam that can be performed at a well child visit. There will be examples of normal and abnormal exam findings and discussion of relevant pediatric eye pathology. Before diving into specific exam maneuvers, these are some general tips to keep in mind throughout the exam. Firstly, Children can have a limited attention span, and so it's recommended to engage the child quickly. Introduce them to your instruments to reduce anxiety. Additionally, working from least in-your-face maneuvers, such as corneal light reflex and ocular motility, to most in-your-face maneuvers, such as any occlusive test, can be helpful to keep the child cooperative. When performing monocular exam techniques, children will commonly attempt to peek, so using an occlusive patch as opposed to your hands or a handheld occluder is recommended. Finally, Working with parents to find out what cartoons the child likes or responds to, combined with a quick smartphone search, can make it much easier to hold a child's attention. Hi, my name is Dr. Levin. We're going to check your eyes today. I'm scared. Oh, you're scared? How about if we check your dolly's eyes first? Would that make you feel better? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Let's check dolly's eyes. Oh, and how about teddy bear? Oh, and now it's your turn. Okay, ready? It's time to check your eyes. Great job. See, that wasn't scary, was it? No. No, you're such a big girl. High five. Good job. You did it. An important part of the pediatric eye exam is assessment of alignment. Misalignment, referred to as strabismus, is a common pediatric ophthalmic problem. It is important to identify these patients because, if not corrected, poor ocular alignment in a developing child can lead to irreversible vision loss. Alignment can be assessed using the corneal light reflex or the reflection of light from off of a child's cornea from a light source, such as a pen light, from roughly one to two feet aimed at the patient's midline. This child has a symmetric and centered corneal light reflex indicating normal ocular alignment. This child shows light lateral to the left pupil, indicating that the left eye is deviated towards the midline. Two methods of quantifying the misalignment include using the estimated distance of the abnormal corneal light reflex from the center of the pupil, known as the Hirschberg method, and using refractive prisms to correct the corneal light reflex and reporting the prism value, known as the Krimsky method. Here, we see another example of the corneal light reflex. At first glance, we may notice the asymmetry of the white surface of this child's right eye and think that this child has a misaligned right eye that deviates inwards. However, the corneal light reflex is centered and symmetric in both eyes, indicating good ocular alignment. This is an example of pseudostrabismus, most commonly caused by a broad nasal bridge that can obscure the sclera or the white surface of the eye. As opposed to true misalignment, this condition does not lead to vision loss and will often improve with time as facial features mature. Extraocular movement can be assessed by moving a fixation target, such as a toy or the tip of a finger, in an H pattern. This pattern is useful because holding each position in the H relies primarily on the action of one extraocular muscle. For example, if a patient could not hold a leftward gaze in their left eye, this would suggest some problem with the action of the left lateral rectus muscle. In the adult exam, the patient is typically asked to keep their head still while moving only their eyes. However, in the pediatric exam, it may be easier to simply allow a child to move their head with the exam and test the limits of their gaze. The red reflex is the reddish-orange reflection of light off of the fundus at the back of the eye, normally seen when using ophthalmoscope or retinoscope. However, if there are any abnormalities in the lens, such as a cataract, or retinal exudates seen in many newborn retinal pathologies, the red reflex may be disruptive. The red reflex is examined by sitting in a darkened room using ophthalmoscope or retinoscope directed towards both eyes of the child simultaneously at approximately 1.5 to 3.5 feet away. To be considered normal, a red reflex must be observed from both eyes symmetrically. Opacities, diminished reflexes, white or yellow reflex, or asymmetry are all examples of abnormal findings on the exam. Please note that the appearance of the red reflex varies based on retinal pigmentation and thus varies by race or ethnicity. Leukocoria, or a white pupil, is a classic case of an abnormal finding on the red reflex exam. It can be a sign of many ocular pathologies, from intrinsic eye pathologies such as Coates disease or a life-threatening disease such as retinoblastoma. Visual acuity is an important part of any eye exam but in the non-communicating pediatric patients, this can be difficult to assess. It is important in any visual acuity exam that each eye is assessed at the best corrected vision independently with the fellow eye occluded, preferably with a patch in children to prevent peaking. At various developmental stages, the visual acuity exam changes depending on the child's ability to communicate and follow instructions. 
as an infant who is nonverbal, fix and follow, or central steady maintained examination and give an idea of visual behavior. Additionally, increased objection to the occlusion of a certain eye may indicate difficulties seen out of the fellow eye. As the patient moves to verbal and matching stages, visual acuity can be assessed through pictures, HOTV cards, and LIA symbols, eventually progressing to the standard Sloan letters to attain a comparable baseline visual acuity to future adult assessments. In this slide, we can see an example of the central steady maintained examination, although typically this type of examination is done in much younger patients. With one eye occluded, present an object for fixation. Note whether the fixation is central or eccentric, held steadily on the target as it's held still and moved around slowly, and finally, is the child able to maintain fixation with a viewing eye when the other eye is uncovered or through a blink? When evaluating visual acuity at distance with LIA symbols or HOTV cards, pediatric patients should be 10 feet from the target for optimal assessment. Sloan letters can be calibrated for a distance of either 10 feet or the adult standard at 20 feet. Classically, the patient identifies the letters or symbols at the largest line and continues down until they are no longer able to identify half or more of the symbols in a line. For example, if a child was able to recite all the letters starting from the top line, but was only able to identify two out of the six letters on this line, then their visual acuity would be reported as 20 to 40. When using these cards with younger children, it's advisable to pretest and evaluate that the child can name the symbols or letters at near and with binocular vision. Mm -hmm. A hand. Good. A bicycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good job. High five. You did it. What's that one? The car. Great job. What's that? A dinosaur. Great job. And how about that one? Last one. Another cake. High five. You did it. Okay. Confrontational visual fields assesses a patient's peripheral vision. In a cooperative patient, this is done by asking the patient to keep fixated on one object centrally and count the number of fingers in each quadrant of the periphery. The key points of this exam are to do one eye at a time. Ensure that your fingers are equidistant from you and the patient and then when you close your eyes, you're still able to see the fingers in your periphery and use one, two, or five fingers as three and four are sometimes difficult to distinguish. Thank you for watching this video on the pediatric eye exam. Please rewatch and rewind as many times as necessary to understand the maneuvers and relevant findings.